Hey everybody, it's Cody Spar with Polypixel again, and in this video I'm just going to go over um, just a general idea of Collision and Unreal. Uh, I usually almost daily get requests about doing a collision differently, or this mesh doesn't have a collision, and where do I, where are the buttons? So this is not a comprehensive tutorial on um, everything collision, but just a general idea to get you up and running. So let's just say hypothetically this doesn't have collision. Let's go ahead and get this collision. So um, I'll go in and open this up. First off, top, touch the collision. And we'll go into the collision and we will uh, remove collision. So you got no collisions. What do you do? So the best understanding that I've had on collision is that cubes are the best. Yeah, you want a cube, but hey, that cube looks like awful. It's like, that's not... There's not round. So, um, generally speaking, sometimes you want to go in and you want to make like round objects, but you can't really do round objects because you can only do, um, well, you could you could do a round object, but you, it's all polygonal. So your object's going to have, your collision's going to have corners and everything like that. And you want to keep everything as primitive as possible. Um, not just for optimizing your collision so it's easier to render but like it ha causes way less bugs when you're doing things like AI or physics or interacting with other physical objects like VFX and stuff like that when you start getting these warped weird shapes issues issues all you get is issues so and if you like before you go in and do your collision I'd almost go play a game that has that's in the genre that you want to do and just like watch what they what their collision interacts like you'll see for the most part i get people thinking like every single nook should have a, a corner on it and everything like that like that only is only the case in like certain fps and usually fps what they do is they'll have like a character collision box and then they'll have a hit box like a hit scan collision box which is much more accurate and the player doesn't interact with it but bullets so if i shoot i don't want to hit the player collision i shoot i want to hit like this object so that's probably the only case when you want like that really refined collision. But if you go and play AAA titles like The Division or Batman, I'm the, the, sorry, the sewers just came up in my head because I recently played them. Um, they're very, very basic. You'll see the characters floating over the edges because the collision is way overextended. Or they'll walk through certain things that like like a crate that just walk right through it because you don't want the character like bouncing up and down on all this kind of collision so you want about as simple as possible and you want boxes so like when you look at this you honestly you could do a box like but we're not gonna do a box we're gonna do a little bit more than a box but that's you could get away with a box because if i were to throw this in the level and play with it as long as this wasn't like a physics object because it would obviously roll as a cube it would look unrealistic um that for the most part would be fine but we'll do a little bit more um so the options in here you do a capsule that's kind of cool when you're doing like tubes and like things like tree bark you can kind of go in and like alt so here i'm going to do this to do an alt drag I, I create a new object and then you can kind of move it out and you can make yourself you can follow the outline of your tree and then there you go. You do capsules and they're nice tubes. These are very cheap too because they're only um, rendering out because um, this is not a polygon. This is like rendering out like a surface. So it's like anything outside of this point. So it's doing like a radial thing. Um, it's very cheap. Uh, same with like a sphere. Spheres are pretty cheap. Not as cheap as a collision or a cube, sorry. But um, very cheap. It's when you get into like the auto convex. This is very expensive. So I see a lot of people do this and you don't get really good results or ever or if rarely. Like this is not that bad, but that is overkill. And I mean, if you're gonna do overkill, like you're not like why you're getting collision through here. So why spend all this expensive geometry on your collision and it's not even that accurate. Now, this is pretty cool. That's not a bad piece to have. So, anyways, I generally try not to use that ever, like, um, ever, unless I'm doing something like a rock, where it's like, yeah, a cube would be impossible <laughs> to kind of like uh, build up your rock shape with a cube. So, not a convex. It kind of is like a a good middle ground. But I would definitely 
reduce the accuracy, reduce the, the specs, because you don't need to be super accurate. Now, for something like this, what I tend to do is you can do um, a projection. So where is that? You can do an oversimplified projection. So what it's going to do is going to look top down, project. It's going to look this way, project. And it's going to look that way, project. Um, that's not the best object for this. Because it's, um, but it's going to try to go like, what are the outer edges? Project a, a line. What are the outer edges? Project a line. Like this has like a, um, like a convex hull. It's not going to build you out a convex hull. It's just going to go from here, out, from here, out, and, then, and vice versa. So it's going to, most of the time, because it's the biggest surface, it's projecting along that surface. If I had a, a cube, it would be much more accurate, like a rectangular cube. It would project every side nicely. So, for something like this, I would probably want this to be round and then these to be cubes. So I'd go project and I go Z. Z project. And there you go. You got yourself like a sphere or cylinder, sorry. And that's a good start. It's obviously extending a little bit. You can shrink that in. And he wants to be flush. There we go. So that's good. I don't really care about that thing. That, that doesn't bother me. More than anything, I think about like what the character's going to stand on. And I don't want his heels and his the, the sole of his like, feet to hover. I just want to be flush, maybe intersect just a little bit just to compensate, just to double check. Then we'll do a box. And we're going to scale this down. There we go. And then I'm going to alt drag. Unlike the editor, if you were to do the viewport, this viewport doesn't act the exact same way. So if you were to alt rotate, it wouldn't duplicate. I'm going to turn snap on rotation and put the movement. There we go. And then I'll go back to cube. And I'm just going to shrink here, shrink there. And you have yourself a pretty good collision. It's pretty cheap. Just a couple, two cubes, and this other very simplified shape. Now, if I were to save this, go here, as long as I have physics object on. It's reacting properly. And if I were to jump on it, whoop, maybe I can't jump on it when it's like that. Anyways, it would look fine. I turn physics off and jump on it. So that's pretty much it. Now, there are a few more things I want to go over as far as, like, um, some issues with making it. As you can see, they, they don't really care about the collision of this character so much. Because he's a big capsule. You can see him like falling. Oh, there we go, finally. So, yeah, you know, there are compromises to make. I just want to make, make that clear. So, I'm going to go back to this object. Now, there are a few other irritating things about this viewport. This viewport doesn't... It's just not the same... As this, you don't get all that bells and whistles. It's very complicated. Um, see that little world to object one? You don't get it. You don't get to go from local to world space. So that's that's right away. That's awful. Now, if you're doing like a big building, you might be like, oh yeah, make big building. It's like a big cube. It's very awkward to do fine tuning. Of the edges. So say the building is, you know, you're like, oh, I'm only like six inches off. And you try to, it, it will pop like 12 inches at a time. And you're like, well, I need six inches. So they have this weird thing. It's a little, this is actually not a good, bad, or a good example because um, this object's small. If I had a big object, it would work. Um, so what it does, I'm trying to get up, see if I can pull off what it's doing. See how it, I hold it and it's growing? That seems to be the only way I can find to get those fine tune uh, details. So when it, see how it pops, 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 pops. It's like it's on a scale snap, but it's not on a scale snap. So when you're moving it, you kind of, it will squeeze based off like the projection. So if I, if I just went out and I held, it's going to slowly grow out. If I scale in and I hold, it's going to slowly scale in. So scale. 
in scale out scale out it's very minor but sometimes that's all you get so i just want to like let you know like if you're struggling you're like this popping is driving me nuts it's see how there you go so yeah so see how it's just popping it like oh, oh like it's doing it like one inch at a time um that's the other thing i hate too see how it's deselecting it it deselects i don't know why it does that it just deselects sometimes after you move things or you scale and move yeah it's uh it's not the best window to create collisions from so it's nice that you only want to do a couple cubes because you want to get a couple cubes in and get out as fast as possible so that's just like a tiny little tip that i found that can like be the make or break when you're when you do want to get that like fine tune um uh pre precision and you just it's popping because of the, the scale and you don't have any components on the side where you can punch in decibel level numbers like 0 0.01 scale you don't get any of that so you get this primitive object that is hard to scale because you get no options and it does other stuff so um it's not the best thing for creating collision but um as long as you're doing very basic cubes, you should be good to go. Um, and it does get the job done 99% of the time. So you can see something like this would be pretty difficult on how to do the collision. So I'll go and remove collision. So here I would almost go against what I said earlier and I would do an auto convex and see if I can get a good shape on the top. Let's see if this works. Take it a while. I don't think I adjusted the settings. So, it actually got a pretty good shape at the top. I'll delete this part because that part's ridiculous, and I think there's a nub that I don't need. And I think that's the only. Oh, it's a couple pieces. That's not ideal that I made a couple pieces, but uh, actually three pieces. So, I'd probably what I would do is I tweak this until I got like one shape. That wasn't overly like trying to be accurate. Like it could be pretty primitive. Um, but and then I would just delete the, the excess stuff and then go back into my regular like build a cube, shrink it down, and then place it here. Take that same cube, scale it back up. Let's see if I can scale there. I did way too much. There we go. And of course, let go. There we go. And then there. So that's pretty much the collision. I wouldn't even do any collision on that nub. I think you want as a character to like bounce up and down over this little silly nub. So there's that trick. Um, there is also, if you want to do it the cube way, because this is, it would be cheaper than still doing it with a convex, um, is to actually do it with cubes and I'm not kidding. I've worked in game production where they would do things like this. They would rotate this cube. I'm on rotate 90 still. Oops. I'd rotate. Put this here. Scale it down. Put it out here. And then rotate. And then find a middle ground where it's not too bad. And too much poking out. And then move it up and then compensate and then move it up and then compensate like that and move it up and do that take these three or these four objects duplicate them rotate them except for because you don't get like the world scale they're gonna be on local and they're all gonna rotate on their own all awkwardly so you got to rebuild it from scratch. So it's not ideal, but I have been on game productions, especially early on in my career, where I had this fun job. And I like that because that's a lot cheaper than the, the convex thing. And it provides less problems. And there's a little bit of like hiccuping on this edging, but you're not going to notice when you're running on it with this character that's already a capsule collision. So that's generally um, some good workarounds. Um, you know, just cubes. Cubes when you can. Use these three. Sometimes use these. 
rarely, if ever, use this one. Cubes are always better if you can. If you can stomach doing this on an object, I'd recommend doing it. If you don't, if you can't stomach it, I'm not going to blame you. Don't do it. Um, yeah, that might be a resource that you don't want to spend, but it's always your time. So time is a resource just as much as um, polygons. So um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, come like come to our Discord channel, ask me some questions. I just wanted to like cover this video because I get a lot of questions almost on a day-to-day -day basis of just very, very basic um, collision questions. And I also see a lot of bad practice out there. So, I mean, when people are teaching game art, they teach glamorous substance painter and Zed brush and million poly characters and normal maps. They don't really teach you the meat and potatoes of collision. It's something that's very boring and nobody wants to talk about it, but it's important. And that's why I just want to cover over just a bit of the basics and how they work in Unreal. Um, yeah, so if you found this video helpful, I'm, I'm more than happy. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, thank you for your support.